All right, so several new things. Um, one, you can see I got the skin tone finally applied to the character and the clothes as well. So his pants are actually a tone that is um, 180 degrees different than his, the base, his team tone. His team tone is yellow, right? So that's kind of how I'm thinking I'm going to organize things here. Like every, every one of these players has a certain color, right? And then you're... Um, You've also got the complementary color. That's what it's called. Uh, the complementary color is 180 degrees different as far as the hue goes. So, um, yeah, we got the player with uh, his skin and clothes different. And all of the basis for being able to have armor and different skins and, for example, a different like a helmet on and a cloak and a um, different weapon and all that kind of stuff is set up because now all the, the character is uh, separated onto layers. We've also got this other cool feature now um, where basically I've got some sparks and some smoke and stuff like that. So it really feels like you're actually hitting stuff. That's really fun. Um, the animation for the sword swing is just really cheesy and quick. I did um, to try to test out um, Magic of Voxel's layers and stuff like that. There's some problem with the... AI getting stuck now, but I'll fix that. But let's look at the the actual um, models now. I've got a process down. This is kind of my most important task of the week was to establish a process for having different layers of um, a character and being able to edit it, edit the character a lot quicker than I was before. For example, before. The way I would edit a character is that I would have all the voxels in one layer. So if I wanted to go and uh, um, let's actually stretch out the right, like or move the right arm, right? If I wanted to move the right arm, the way I would do it before is I would have to um, go into this, the model view. I would have to like establish some view which I could get these pixels or these voxels accurately. Then I would select the right voxels. Then I would move the voxels, you know. It's so much easier than that now. Uh, now that it's all separated out into layers. So here's the trick. Um, when you, if you're inside this view right here, the world view, you can't get out of it unless you've selected an object. Um, and it was at first I was really confused about how to select objects. I thought I had to select the layer and then unselect everything else and then go select that layer again. So we've got it actually selected and then go back and edit it. That was just way too much work. I found a really quick shortcut. Check this out. So, um, say I've got nothing selected here, right? This is the this is the part where, I, like, I, let's say I want to select the right leg. All you gotta do is click on the right leg, and it actually selects the right layer. And you can go switch back. Look, now I'm editing the the right leg layer. If I want to go edit the torso now, I just click on the torso, and it actually automatically selects it. You can tell because it's actually setting its. Um, little arrow thing right here next to the layer. See that? Now I've selected the head, there's that, here's the weapon. So it's actually really smart about how it does it. Thanks, Magic of Voxel. Yay! Uh, so that, that just makes everything so much easier. If I want to go and rotate this sword um, on the x-axis, I could do that. Or this, this is the z-axis, so it's gonna look weird, but anyways. Oh, whoops, I have the, the leg selected. So. <laughs> That rotated the leg right there. So that just, that just makes animating so much easier. Now I've got, um, I can do these little nuanced animations. Check out this animation, it's a little bit nicer. He moves his feet a little bit, he moves his head. And it just looks nicer when you have it like that. And it's so much easier to edit now. So that's it for this update. Thanks for watching.